Chris Penrose. I'm the Senior Vice President of the Internet of Things at AT&T. All right, so let's talk IoT. Yeah. You guys have had a lot of announcements uh, during the CES time with your uh, developers conference as well. Can you tell me a little bit about those? Yeah, we've made a ton of great announcements here with AT&T and in, in the IoT space. Uh, we'll start off with the connected car. Uh, we made some big announcements uh, with both Ford Motor Company uh, and BMW. Uh, BMW, is, uh, we extended our uh, relationship with them and are bringing LTE connectivity uh, into their vehicles, uh, including uh, turning uh, their cars into, into Wi-Fi hotspots. Uh, which is very exciting. And then Ford uh, has also been a long-standing relationship with AT&T, but we've now got commitment from Ford to bring LTE to over 10 million vehicles between now and 2020 uh, and really power uh, their uh, sync services, uh, remote start and those types of services, as well as bring that Wi-Fi uh, hotspot capability into the car. So some big announcements around automotive. We also did uh, uh, some work with, uh, with Qualcomm uh, on a, a, a swappable uh, module so that you could actually keep the car updated as network uh, technologies changed out. So that was pre that was pretty exciting as well. Uh, I think when we talk about uh, uh, other big announcements, we made some uh, really big announcements around smart cities. Uh, we announced a, a, a whole new framework in, in which we're approaching uh, cities around the world to truly transform the experience uh, for those cities. Uh, and we're, we're really bringing together you know, a number of different pieces to the, to the, to the table. We're bringing our, our connectivity layer, uh, our platforms, some end-to-end -end solutions that are focused on very specific verticals. And we also announced a whole set of alliance uh, partners that are coming together with AT&T to make these cities a reality. Uh, and, and so it's really a, a very exciting opportunity to, where we're going to really transform the way cities are operating as well as transform the way citizens are engaging with, those, uh, with each city. And, uh, uh, we also announced three spotlight cities uh, yesterday with Atlanta and Dallas and Chicago being the first places where we're going to go and sit down with those cities and deploy actual solutions. And we're taking kind of a, an interesting approach here um, where these are really going to become living labs where we're going to be able to learn with the city about the true impacts of these deployments uh, and then take those learnings and be able to then share them and help roll those out to other cities around the United States and around the world. And so what was the selection process like as far as choosing the cities? So with the cities, we've really have sat down and, and, and talked with, uh, you know, we've, we've got uh, longstanding relationships with, you know, uh, these cities, you know, based upon uh, AT&T's longstanding uh, efforts around the country. And we sat down with cities and really talked to them about the idea about where we want to go and, and how interested were they in actually pursuing smart cities initiatives. Uh, and, and really were able to kind of coalesce around uh, where did, where do we see the actual uh, cities investing or showing interest and, and where we saw the opportunities uh, to actually make an impact. And so uh, we, we only announced three cities so far. We actually have more, uh, you know, that we're uh, going to be ring out and they'll be also very, you know, these are very large cities. We'll have some smaller cities uh, as well that we're going to be talking about, but it, but it truly comes down to what, what are the needs uh, that the city has and are, and are they committed to actually, you know, working in conjunction with ourselves and, and our other alliances members to, to really bring those solutions to bear. And so why is an alliance like this important to have all these partnerships? I mean, because one one company can't do it all, right? That's exactly right. Uh, you know, what we really did with our with the alliances is we you know, we sat down and looked at what are the different solutions that we need in these cities that are going to really uh, help them transform the city. And so if we look at, across uh, different verticals, you know, we're, we're looking at things like smart lighting, we're looking at you know, water, we're looking at waste management, we're looking at uh, you know truly uh, doing energy uh, efficiency. Uh, it could be transportation, uh, and because we've got so many different verticals that are at play, we then sat down with with uh, and looked at which companies are actually helping us bring those solutions to bear and or sitting down and having smart cities conversations themselves. Uh, you know, and even a company like Deloitte, uh, who uh, is one of the Alliance members, uh, has, has been out there uh, as, you know, talking with cities about helping them create their smart city strategy. So it made, you know, it was made great sense to have a, a company like that as part of the Alliance so that when they're in there having the conversations, they can bring AT&T to the table and the other Alliance members. But really exciting. I mean, we have, you know, big companies. I mean, Cisco, IBM, uh, Ericsson, GE, uh, you know, and, uh, I don't want to leave anybody out. Uh, <laughs> Qualcomm, uh, as well, uh, you know, that have come together with us, and uh, and again, this is a, I think, just a great way to sit down and say we're going to come in and help invest in these cities, and then take those learnings and be able to then take them forth into other cities around the country. 
And so, uh, as far as infrastructure goes, what part will AT&T be playing in providing the infrastructure? So, it, it's going to vary by different solution sets, but uh, most of these devices are going to be, you know, cellularly enabled. So, we'll, you know, we'll be putting our connectivity into, uh, into the actual uh, solutions, uh, the point solutions. Uh, there can be actually situations where we're bringing small cells in with infrastructure. So a, a, a good example might be around smart lighting. Uh, if, if there's an opportunity or need to do some network densification in that city, we can actually use that, that lighting you know, as a potential vehicle to bring smart cell, uh, more cell side uh, coverage into a city. But uh, we also are looking at Wi-Fi uh, type of deployments. So if you're thinking about uh, you know, being able to offer public Wi-Fi, uh, how can we bring that and leverage uh, you know, AT&T's capability sets in that space to bring those solutions to bear. Uh, and, and so it's going to really come down to you know, which solutions are being deployed and then are we connecting them directly or are we actually util in, or in using the macro network that's already there or are we adding additional network elements. And so it seems like of all the four major U.S. carriers, AT&T is focused the most on IoT. Can you tell me a little bit about why? Well, AT&T has really been at IoT for a very long period of time. We started back eight years ago with the Emerging Devices organization, uh, and we also had a sister organization called Machine to Machine uh, that we started. And we really were looking again at what are those uh, transformational uh, type of devices beyond phones and, and tablets that could be connected that were not connected yet. Uh, and and we built the business up from you know to over 25 million things we've already connected on our networks uh, three third quarter uh, and and so I think where we see is just a ton of opportunity and growth and as we've continued to learn and work across more and more verticals uh, we've now gotten ourselves in a position where we truly are one of the world's leader you know when it comes to IoT and and we we've, we've also created a number of different technologies along the way that really help us continue to differentiate ourselves from everybody else uh, you know we've uh, pioneered what we call the global SIM uh, that allows companies to take our SIM chip, put it inside their products, and ship that anywhere in the world, and we can make it work. Uh, and so they don't have to go talk to every carrier around the world to be able to enable their solutions. They can, they can work with AT&T, and we can make it work around the world for them. Mm -hmm. A huge benefit. Uh, another area is around our, our unique billing capabilities. Uh, so we are one of the first ones to be able to do what we call split billing. Uh, where we can take a single SIM chip and we can split the billing between what we're going to charge to a company versus what we might charge to an end customer. A good example of how this plays out is if you think about our General Motors relationship, uh, you know, we're charging uh, General Motors a wholesale uh, rate between us and them for services that they want to render, such as updating the car over the air or pulling information off the vehicle uh, or, or doing some of the basic uh, safety security services. But if the customer wants to buy a, a Wi-Fi hotspot, we take that same connectivity and we split off the data to then charge that to an end customer, whether onto a credit card or actually onto the AT&T uh, phone bill. And, and that unique ability to actually split that billing uh, between uh, you know, a company and an end customer is, is, is another major differentiator for AT&T. So we see a ton of growth in the space. Uh, we think more and more things are going to be connected. We think you know, when you connect things, you make them smarter. And, and we also are really focused on being an integrated carrier where we can truly offer up uh, every part of your life. How can we connect that and make it work better for you? And that's why we're focused on it. And another important part of this is, is healthcare. That's going to be a growing part. Yeah. And you're, you just opened up, or you're going to open up a foundry uh, dedicated to healthcare. Can you tell me about that? Sure. Uh, healthcare, we think, is another great area of opportunity to connect things that haven't been connected before and transform the way healthcare is being delivered. And what we've announced, uh, you know, just in the last couple of days here, is that we're going to be opening up a, a dedicated AT&T foundry for connected health in Houston, inside the Texas Medical Center, the one of the, the largest medical community out there. And and really, the goal is is how can we insert ourselves into that medical community, bring in developers, bring in the actual folks working in hospitals and doctors and understand how we can accelerate de deployments in this space you know, from idea to prototype and into production, uh, and you're really taking you know uh, the entire foundry network that we've built up and you know using that to support the healthcare community as well. So we're you know we're, we've done this before in connected cars, uh, where we set, stood up the drive studio in Atlanta, uh, and worked specifically around that vertical, and we've seen a ton of success in that space. And so we said, let's go to the next space where we think there's a great opportunity, and, and, and we're, we're going to focus on healthcare and really make a big difference there. Uh, anything else you want to add that I missed? 
Yeah, I would just say, again, AT&T is, is truly the world's leader when it comes to IoT. We, we've been very focused on making sure that we can provide the right tools and services to, in, to our in, uh, business customers, as well as creating differentiated and integrated experiences for our consumers. And we think that AT&T is you know, really poised to continue to lead this, uh, not only domestically, but around the world.